When I examine that old rugged cross, the mighty God it's past, it reaches down. To the lowest of hell, to heaven's golden strand, I stand amazed. I stand amazed of this love that has sought. Save me and bought me. I stand amazed when I imagine in glory that day when all of heaven stood still as God incarnate. Savior of man died upon Calvary's tree. I stand amazed. I stand amazed of this love that has sought me. Save me and bought me. I stand amazed of this love that has sought me. Save me and bought me. Oh, I stand. If you have your Bibles, turn to Genesis chapter 18 for a few moments. I know the children get out at 8.30, so I will not go long. I'll probably preach about as long as Brother Wesley preached, or maybe just a few minutes over. And that was a good message, wasn't it? Amen. That's worth coming for right there. Amen. And that song, and even the prayer request. Amen. Thank God. Killing of grasshoppers, a true miracle of God. And how many people have acknowledged that in America? Not many. And Minnesota's falling apart. Amen. Don't let me get started on that. We'll get all in trouble. Amen. But it, I mean, it, that place is falling apart. Amen. They're celebrating in the streets now and all kinds of stuff going on. Uh, no comment. Genesis chapter 18. Genesis chapter 18. I don't apologize for preaching, so I won't get into politics right now. Genesis chapter 18. I want to preach a message, and I, when I get in these couples retreats, I get consumed with it, and uh, the reason I do is for these uh, eight or nine reasons, the reason I go around the country, and I don't accept many speaking engagements, because I don't get any, but I do get several for family, uh, that's just my heartbeat. Uh, somebody told me about 10 years ago that I ought to retire from this church, and uh, and and just go into full time family ministry, and of course they weren't the Holy Ghost, so I didn't I didn't listen to them. Amen. Um, I believe God still wants me to pastor for a few more decades. No, uh, I don't know how long. Amen. As long as God gives us health. Amen. But um, you know why is the family important? The Bible says a lot about family, and um, I want to just give you one reason. Well, I'm going to give you all the reasons, then I'm going to go back and we're going to preach a series on why the family is important. And the first one is in, found in Genesis chapter 18, verses 18 through 19, where Abraham is being sent out to establish a great nation. And through a miracle, um, he's about to have a baby boy. And the greatest miracle is that Sarah's about to have that boy. And he got ahead of God. And he had a lapse and, uh, and tried to get ahead of God and help God out. And then we see, uh, you know, 
uh, some great blessings, especially in chapter 17 where God meets with Abraham. And I want to tell you something, friend. You are blessed if you have a father that knows how to meet with God and God meets with them. I think the greatest problem in America is the family is being fractured. One family at a time, this nation's being destroyed. The foundations of this nation. And I want to tell you something, friend. We don't, it's not all gun control. Maybe something needs to be done. I don't know. We won't get into that. We will have uh, a split. We'll split the church in a hillbilly church. Amen. We will flat split it if we get into that. But I'm going to tell you this. What we need is heart control. And I'll tell you where heart control starts. Daddy and mama raising children up to fear God. Say amen right there. I'm going to tell you something. All these bad policemen, all these bad uh, criminals... Uh, if there is, and there is on both sides, I'm sure. Thank God for the good ones. Yeah. I know one good one. Amen. He's a retired state trooper sitting right here. I go soul winning with him a lot, Brother Mark. Uh, they're not all bad. Amen. Just like not all preachers are bad because one preacher falls. Amen. Or makes a mistake. But I want to tell you something, friend. What every policeman needs and every criminal needs before they become a criminal is a godly daddy and a godly mama. And they need to learn to fear God. I want to tell you something. Seven times in the Bible, it admonishes us to discipline our children. If you do not discipline your children, you're teaching them they can get away with sin. And now we're going to have no police, it looks like. That's, that'd be anarchy. That'd be the craziest thing I ever heard of in my life. I'll, put, I'll throw that in. Um, but I'll say this, friend. We need to teach our children that there is a consequences for sin. For the ways of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ the Lord. And so when you spank a child, discipline a child, put them in quiet time, whatever you do to them, you're telling them that there is a consequence to sin. So you can't go out and shoot your neighbor. You can't go out and rob a store. You can't go out and burn a business down because you need to realize you're going to pay a price. And you teach them that when they're real little. I was amazed at how Brother Petty talked about his daddy making paddles. I said, I've never heard of somebody saying their daddy made paddles. And I know Chris and I know Brad, they needed a whole lot of more made, amen, to fit their bottoms, amen. And so, you know, some people say, I don't believe in that. That's just not, well, you don't believe the Bible then because seven times the Bible tells us. We'll, we'll keep our uh, kids from hell, even. Proverbs 23, verse 15. Why? Because they fear the man of God, they, they reverence the house of God, and they fear sin, and they fear God. And so therefore, when somebody's preaching, they have respect, and when they have respect for preaching, they respond to preaching, they get saved, and they don't go to hell. Yeah. Amen? It don't mean you can beat the Hades out of them. It means that you can discipline them, and they can fear God. Amen? Now, I'm not saying go out there and grab a kid and whip them today. God help us. Uh, and by the way, the greatest discipline, just talking just a second, because I'm not teaching on child rearing. We ought to let Jeremy do that. He's done a great job. But it's really Rebecca. She ought to teach on it. But amen. Don't you tell him I said that. But, uh, you know, the greatest discipline that a child can have is that they grieve father and mama when they sin. And so thus... There needs to be a relationship. A relationship. That you ought to love your children with all your heart and all your soul, but love God more. And then when you even grieve about their sin, it breaks their heart that you broke their heart. Now let me just say this, friend, because I'm preaching on the family just for a second. That don't happen overnight. And if you try to start when they're 18, forget it. It starts when they're 18 months old. No, excuse me, when they're in the womb. That'll be instruction. I'm convinced a lot of babies know my voice because they hear my voice every Sunday from the womb. 
You say, oh, you're dreaming. Well, I think they're listening better than some of y'all. No, not really. But anyway, let's go to Genesis 18. Amen. That was all free. Didn't cost you a thing. Hope you got your Bibles. We're not palm readers. We're Bible readers. Bring your Bible uh, to the house of God. Amen. Let's go to Genesis 18. The first reason the family's important. That was a good reason right there that we don't have anarchy in the streets. Let's stand on the Word of God just for a second. You've been standing a long time, and I'll just preach about 20 minutes. You can grab your kids at 8.30 and thank God that you're here. Genesis chapter 18 and verse 18. Seeing that Abraham shall surely become a great and mighty nation, and all the nations of the earth shall be blessed in him. And then right after that statement, we see in verse 19 the foundation for any nation. For I know him that he will command his children, Genesis 18, 19, you with me? 18, 19. For I know him that he will command his children and his household after him. And they shall keep the way of the Lord to do justice and judgment that the Lord may bring upon Abraham that which he hath spoken of him. And the Lord said, because the cry of Sodom and Gomorrah, I just want you to know the atmosphere around this promise, Sodom and Gomorrah is great because their sin is grievous. I will go down now and see whether they have done altogether according to the cry of it, which has come to me, and if not, I will know. And the men turned their faces from thence and went towards Sodom. But Abraham stood yet before the Lord, and Abraham drew near and said, Will thou also destroy the righteous with the wicked? And he begins to intercede for Lot and that nation. You may be seated as I pray. Father, thank you for the foundation of every nation, and that's a godly home. And God, help us, Lord, to realize the importance of our marriage, of our training our children, of Lord, dear God, being a family. And God, also, I thank God for this church family. Lord, I don't dread this weekend because it's just my extended family. I look forward to the fellowship. I long to see even more come so we can just spend time together. And Lord, because the world is going down and it's corrupt, and Lord, there is no attraction there. God, there ought to be an attraction to godliness and holiness and your loving kindness. So Lord, help us to be vessels of honor and heirs together of the grace of life and have the kind of marriages and families that we need to have to turn back America to you. And so Lord Jesus, we plead and beg for revival. I never, never dreamt that I'd live long enough to see the shape that America's got in. And God help us. In Jesus' name, amen. I don't think I'll go over the other points. I'm just going to dwell right here for just for a few minutes. Why is the family important? I'll tell you why the family's important. And that is, it's the foundation of society. The family is the foundation of society. There is no other foundation except Jesus Christ in your life. And if your life is not based on Jesus Christ, you're on shaky ground. You're as unstable and whimsical as politicians. God help us there to never be called liberal, but be called biblical and conservative and biblical. But I want to tell you something, friend. We live in a very wicked society. You might want to put your head in the sand, but I'm going to tell you something. If you'll just think about some of the laws that's being passed, some of the laws that's being introduced, and, God, and seeing some of the laws that have been passed and are already in law in California and sweeping this way towards good old Georgia, <clears throat> you'll be shocked. I'm shocked. And I imagine... Abraham was shocked when he found out that his <clears throat> nephew, Lot, a great man, but made the wrong choice and decided to go to Sodom and Gomorrah. 
I won't. I don't have to tell you what the culture was in that in that uh, city. That's where we get the word sodomite. I mean, that's a biblical word, may I say. Amen. They're not really gay because gay means happy. I'll never say just going down the street, boy, I'm gay today, <laughs> you know. I mean, you just can't do it, amen. You can't use that word. They stole that word from us because I would help, God help anybody accuse me of that. <clears throat> I'm far as from that as I can be. But I'll tell you this, friend, they're not happy. Out of the will of God, you're not happy. And this nation was not happy. And I want to tell you something, friend. It was so wicked that when uh, they got, Lot got to town and became a leader, he sat at the gate. The Bible says in chapter 19 that uh, his two daughters was offered to these men, these, these sodomites, that they might not attack the angels of God that were male or whatever. It's found in verse 8, Behold, now I have two daughters which I have not known man. Let me, I pray thee, bring them out to you and do not uh, them as is good in your eyes. Only these men do nothing, for therefore came they under the shadow of my roof. Now, folks, I'm going to tell you something. That's wicked. When Lot has to say, hey, listen, I'll give you my daughters if you want to attack these men. Folks, I love the Bible because the Bible doesn't soft soap anything. And the Bible shows the scars as well as the stars. And the Bible shows the sin and what it will do to you. Just as Brother Wesley so wonderfully preached, uh, sin will take you lower than you ever thought it would take you. It will keep you a lot longer. It will hurt you and hurt your family a lot longer than you ever thought it would. Say amen right there. And I want to tell you something. Lot never thought that it would come to this. But the contrast is found in verse 18 where the Bible says... Abraham is going to establish a great nation and the reason he'll establish that great nation is that he is going to lead his children. He's going to command his children and his household after him. Now folks, I want to tell you something. You need to set the example <clears throat> as parents. The greatest way to teach a child and train up a child in the way he should go is walk that way first. Say amen. And then they'll still rebel sometimes. And then they'll still break your heart sometimes. But I want to tell you something, friend. This world is going down the drain if we don't get some fathers and mothers that will stay consistent even when the children want to live their own life. We must stay consistent. And we must stay close to God. And folks, he commanded his children, but he commanded them after him. He said, I'm going to walk with God. He was saved in Genesis chapter 15 and uh, verse 6. You say, how do you get saved in the Old Testament? Same way you get saved in the New Testament. Look at it. Genesis 15 verse 6. And he believed in the Lord and, it, and he counted it to him for righteousness. The word counted is the same word we get in the New Testament, imputed. Folks, we're imputed righteousness. You know what that means? Christ's righteousness is transferred to our account and our account of sin is transferred to his right, uh, his, his, his cross and his death. And so he took my sin and I can take his righteousness. Amen. Folks, thank God, he that knew no sin became sin for us that we might be made the righteous of God in him, in Jesus. It's all by grace. It's all by believing God. He didn't keep the law to get saved. Praise God, he believed in Jesus ahead of time. He saw the Lord, Genesis chapter 22, and he saw the Lamb. He saw the cross. And folks, thank God he got saved by faith just like any other sinner. There's no other way to be saved but faith in the blood of Jesus. Amen. Amen. And so he was a saved daddy. And he was a saved leader. And folks, he was not only a saved leader, but he was a sanctified leader. Thank God the Bible says in this uh, next chapter, chapter 17, he says, and Abraham was 90 years old and nine, verse one, the Lord appeared to Abram and said, I am almighty God, walk before me and be thou perfect. The word perfect means mature. He never was perfect. I don't care what Jews say about Father Abraham, he was not perfect, he is not to be worshiped. Praise God, he was a sinner just like me and you, but thank God he was walking with God. That makes him mature. You know, we need to have a mature leadership in the home. 
That means we don't vote on whether we go to church. We just say we're going to church. We don't vote on what church to go to. We don't leave it up to little Johnny because they have better parties down the road or they have a better music program. We're working on all that. But I want to tell you something, friend. We're not working on it to entertain you. We're working on it to worship God. And if God's revealed, it's enough. If we have preaching like that, that's enough. If we just had that preaching and went home, that'd be enough. If we just had a prayer meeting tonight, it'd be enough. But thank God for preaching. Thank God for his word. And folks, I want to tell you who he dwelt with. He had a revelation of El Shaddai, almighty God. I want to tell you something, folks. In the midst of all that I've mentioned about our nation, I hadn't mentioned much, but I want to tell you something. I could go in detail how wicked it is. And I want to tell you something. One of the things that just turns my stomach the most is when people think they want to be another sex, another gender, and they start having operations and expect the government to pay for it, even teenagers. And I'll tell you what, that's sick. Because I want to tell you something. It was determined when you're born who you are, a man or a woman. Amen? I don't think you ought to vote on it, or I don't think you ought to let Junior decide that he wants to be Janet. That's sick. You know what is sick? It's shaking your fist at God saying, God, I want to be my own creator. I want to determine my own destiny, and and I'll tell you that destiny will be hell and not heaven if they don't believe. And friend, I want to be a boy instead of a girl. I want to be a girl instead of a boy. And I'm going to do it by mutilating my body and being a creator or recreator of my own body. Now, folks, can you see the blasphemy of that? Can you see the heresy of that? I know this is not a typical Wednesday night prayer meeting message, but I want to tell you something. It's about time we wake up to how far America's got from God and face it and call sin, sin. And if you don't like this kind of preaching, I'm going to tell you something. Uh, I'm not letting up. And I hope I preach the truth in love because I'm burdened for this nation. But I love you enough to warn you about sin. And folks, our nation is reeling in it. There's, there's, there's uh, sodomites and lesbians on every network now. I mean, I, I, I'm just telling you the truth. You can't watch TV without somebody making a statement that it's okay. And according to my Bible, it's not okay. So how are you going to train your children? By Hollywood or by the Word of God? Will Smith left Georgia over this voting thing. You know what I want to say about that? Hasta la vista, baby. I'll never watch another movie you make, tall boy. I, that'll probably get recorded, and you know I'll be I'll be uh, investigated by the RAS. Well, come on, but I, I better not invite them. But I'm gonna tell you this: I'm gonna tell you this right now that we did not invite sin to run Georgia. God's people need to stand up, and I'm gonna tell you what we need to stand up. We need to get back to home. We need to get back to our home. You say we're gonna ever see revival in America? One home at a time. I tell you what, we might not see revival in Whitfield County, but I want to have revival in Cofield family. I want to have a revival of kindness towards my wife. I was kidding about her injury, and I, and I was laughing. I said, I hope that's not misunderstood, because uh, she she would she would take that cane and hit me on my bald head if she thought I was serious. I just try to keep her smiling and laughing, because she always keeps me smiling, because she's one of the greatest wives a man could ever have. And I'm so sorry that she can't go shopping. I really am. I'm not kidding. You thought I was this kid. I want her to enjoy herself tomorrow. And so Miss Rose comes up with this great idea. I need to take a wheelchair up there. Mind your own business. No, but uh, (laughs) but, but I I just just say it. You know, that's the kind of compassion we have in this church. Everybody's concerned about everybody else. I love it. But I want to tell you something, friend. It starts in my home. It starts in my relationship with my wife. It starts in my relationship with my children. I love my children. But they ought to know that they have a godly daddy that loves God and will not compromise the word of God and will live the word of God. And and if they go against God, I'm coming after them. I don't care how old they are. I thank God they haven't disappointed me. 
Now, they're not perfect. They're a lot like their daddy. You pray for them. But I'm just saying, friend, it starts in the home. And why is the family important? Because God said, Abraham, you're going to be a mighty nation. And I want you to go down to Sodom and I want you to intercede for them. And the reason I tell you to go intercede for them and be a man of God that can pray for the wicked nation is because you know me as Almighty God and you walk it, you don't just talk it, and you keep the way of the Lord. I mean, that's a strong verse. And you do justice and judgment that the Lord may bring upon Abraham that all, all that he has spoken of him. Isn't it great to know that Daddy is doing what God called him to do and told him to do and his prayers are being answered. The greatest blessing on this earth is how praying mom and daddy. When my daddy was an alcoholic, burning up the house, wrecking the cars, embarrassing the stuffings out of us, I prayed every night, oh God, please save my daddy because I don't want my mother to have to live in this after I go be a youth pastor and try to reach every youth in Claxton, Georgia, Evans County, and we 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 we, re, we, we reached out to the whole neighborhood. I mean, every surrounding county. My 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 preacher was a was aggressive and soul winning, and and we had we have three thousand in the whole city. Had eight hundred and thirty one in Sunday school. Had seventy eight youth when I left the youth department in a little town like that. And I'm not bragging. I'm just saying. Uh, thank God for it, but I want to tell you something. All that's in vain if I lose Connie and lose Jason and lose Stephen and lose Stephanie. Lose Jason. And the devil tried to do that when I started this church. Was the prophet of man of you? Build the greatest church in Whitfield County and lose his family. And so, everything falls and rises in leadership, but that leadership starts at home. 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 And folks, I see this, and I see it very clearly, is that um, the sin was very grievous in Sodom. Praise God, there was a man that could pray. And he prayed and prayed and prayed. God still had to destroy that place because of the iniquity. And then if you turn over to chapter 19, verse 36, and I'll close. I know it's Wesley closed three times. You're doing good, brother. Uh, I don't know where you're learning that bad habits, but uh, that was good closing. Amen. But when you got 15 minutes, that's all you got on your mind. I got to close. I got to close. I got to close. I got 830. I got to close. I got to close. And so we, when a preacher says, I'm closing, he's trying to find the runway. He just can't land the thing. Amen? We're trying to find it. But look at, look at uh, uh, chapter 19, and I want you to look at verse 36, and I'll close with this thought. Thus were both the daughters of Lot with child by their father. Now there was Sodom and Gomorrah was full of sodomites, homosexuality, lesbianism. They probably had some changed gender and uh, gender identity problems. I'm sure it was there. Because one sin leads to another sin. But then we have incest. And then through that, um, the Moabites came into existence through those ba the babies of those girls. And that was the arch enemy of Israel for many, many centuries. Sin abounds. And so... I just want to give you this real quick. We got chapter 18, Abraham. And then we got chapter 19 and 20, Lot. And Lot leans towards Sodom. Then he becomes part of Sodom. And then he loses everything. And even his wife turns back. And folks, I want to tell you something that's amazing. They're from the same stock, Genesis chapter 11, verse 31. They're subject to the same environment. They lived in the same place. They both were justified men. Lot was saved. I can prove it scripturally. 2 Peter 2 verse 7 and verse 8 says that the sin of Sodom vexed him. In other words, the sin bothered him. 
And if sin doesn't bother you, you're lost. So Lot backslid, and boy, did he backslide. And when you backslide, you take a whole lot of people down the drain with you. Let me say this real quick. The only difference, they had a contrasting character and career, but I want to tell you what really made the difference. Choices. Choices. At the crisis of their life, choices. Folks, I want to tell you something. Lot chose him all the plains of Jordan for present advantage. He, he, he sacrificed eternity on the altar of immediacy. And doesn't people sell out for a pot of chili every day? And Abraham looked for a city which had foundation. Hebrews 11, verse 10. He looked for a city. I'm going to tell you why he looked for a city. Because he saw the city builder. He saw the maker. He saw the almighty God. He saw El Shaddai. Folks, he knew him and he loved him. And folks, I want to tell you something. We see it very clearly that he came and dwelt in the plain of Mamre, which means fatness, which, but in Hebrew, it means communion. The men remain types of the world and spiritual behavior. Here it is. Worldly behavior, Lot. Spiritual behavior, Abraham. I'm going to tell you what it's going to take. Here it is. It's real simple, real quick. The reason that we need to have an emphasis on the family in this church, we need to have marriage retreats. I don't justify what happened anyway. The reason I need to go preach on family retreats and marriage is because it's the foundation for our whole society. And if we're ever going to have revival, we must start in the home. And everything else is pumped up. If your relationship's not right in your home, it won't be in around the kitchen table. It's not going to be right around the Lord's Supper table. Amen. You cannot pump it up. You cannot escape. Folks, Christianity starts in the home. That's what... God said, Abraham, you're going to have a, you're going to be the uh, father of a great nation. You're going to build a great nation, and I'm going to bless you, and I'm going to bring about what I spoke to you about, and and I and I'm going to do it because you command your children and your household after you, and you keep the way of the Lord. There it is, bottom line. There's the foundation. But I want to tell you what the foundation of the home is: Jesus Christ. If you base your home on how you feel, you will devour each other. This couple's just been married a week. Two weeks, one week, two weeks. I don't know, 10 days, amen, whatever. I was there by way of video, amen. I zoomed in, amen. And uh, they're excited. And they had a great honeymoon all the way down south, I almost said South Africa. Boy, Mark wished that would happen. Uh, no, South South Carolina. Beautiful Savannah. That's where we're going to have our next couple's retreat. And, uh, you know, I just, uh, you know, they did not make vows that they'd always feel towards each other. They made vows that they'd be faithful to each other. I'll get into that tomorrow. But I want to say this, friend. We don't base our relationship on feelings. We base our relationship on obedience and faith and surrender and Jesus. We need revival in the home because it's the very foundation of America. I often say this, if I were the devil, and I've been accused of that being here 43 years by some people. I don't know why. I thought I was a nice guy. But if I was the devil, I know how to destroy Whitfield Baptist Church. I know how to do it. I know what he'd say. Here's the strategy. One marriage at a time. Divide and conquer. Divide and devour. Divide and detour. Divide and deceive. The devil's strategy's always been the same. He's easy to plot. Folks, he's after your home. He's after your children. He's after your heart. He wants a divided heart. He wants a divided home. He wants you to give up 
on God, and he wants you to go to Sodom and Gomorrah. I know you wouldn't go that far, but you never know. And so what I'm saying is, the family's important, number one. My first sermon on this, I got eight. Because it's the foundation for the greatest nation on this earth, the United States of America. And I'm burdened for America. And I'm broken hearted for America. And I just don't know what to do except say, families, come back to God. Children, obey your parents. Respect your parents. Learn from your parents. And parents, lead them in the way they should go. That's the, that's the key to revival. Father, thank you for this time we've had together. I think both sermons went together, even though they don't have to, because we can have two messages tonight and need them both. But Lord Jesus, help us to see the choices that Abraham made and the choices that Lot made. And Lord, we got the advantage of reading the whole book of Genesis, and we see the consequences. We see the repercussions. We see the end of sin. We have the book of Proverbs. We can read chapter 1 through 7 and see the end of sin at every chapter. And so, Lord Jesus, we will never have the right to shake our fist at your in your face and say we didn't know. We weren't warned. And as a nation, we didn't know. Lord, you gave us the key for our nation. And that was that we come back to Christ as Lord in our homes. With every head bowed, every eye closed. How many is praying for revival for America? And how many will pray for your home to be the start of it? your marriage to be the incubator of it, the stimulus of it. And you say, preacher, I, I want to have a revival in my own heart. And I want you to pray for me. Would you slip your hand up high for prayer in your home? There's lost loved ones that you ought to intercede for. If you're not right with God, you can't even pray for them. If you get bitter, you can't pray for them. The Bible says if you... Uh, have an alt against your wife or husband, he won't, it'll hinder your prayers. If you don't have honor in your home, it'll hinder your prayers. First Peter 3, 7. It says we can be heirs to, together of the grace of God and have our prayers answered. I believe it's time to pray, families, for other family members. And we got to be on praying ground to do it. Father, I feel your spirit tonight. It's a slim crowd. Not, it's not fancy. We didn't hear to meet to be fancy or to just have a crowd. God, we came here to crowd it in on your, at your feet and say, Lord, we love you. And Lord, we need you. And so, Lord, send revival to every home in this, in this congregation. And God, may this message be repeated to our leaders in the Master Club and the leaders in the youth. God, may they hear it and hear it clear that they'll never lead others until they lead their families. And so, dear God, please bless. And we'll thank you for the foundation of the nation, our homes, to come back to you. Thank you for every hand that was raised. God, I, my hand was raised because I sure want to draw closer to you. In Jesus' name.